r slash ask reddit, what's the most horrible way to die that you've ever heard of that has actually happened? Serious, NSFW. There was a comment on here about a worker at a steelworks who committed suicide by jumping in the molten steel crucible, because it was liquid he expected to drown in it, unaware that the density of molten metal is the same as solid metal, so he just skittered across the surface and fried to death. Brutal. That guy that walked 700 meters off the boardwalk in Yellowstone with his sister and slipped into a boiling, acidic geezer comes to mind. That guy who jumped in a boiling geezer to save his dog also comes to mind. When they pulled him out he had third degree burns over 100% of his body while he was still alive and conscious enough to realize he ducked up. When his friend pulled him out he said something along the lines of that was stupid. How bad am I? I'm an idiot. Like even though his nerve endings were probably shot pretty instantly once he was in there the idea that he was able to realize that he was going to die is ducked up. I read somewhere, maybe in a book of deaths at the Grand Canyon, about a woman who jumped trying to commit suicide. Unfortunately she survived because she hit a ledge that wasn't quite far enough down to kill her. She had to crawl until she could find another edge to finish the deed. Girl's hair got caught in a lathe and pulled her in. She was alone in the machine shop at night and the lathe kept spinning her what was left of her around until people came in the following morning. Also, any jewelry, watches, or anything else, especially metal, that can be caught on a machine and literally tear your fingers arms limbs off. That shit's got to go. Vlad the Impeller didn't stab a massive hole in you to prop you up on the stake. No, they shoved it up your a-hole. Your intestines would be rearranged and eventually you would die of either sepsis or dehydration. I was going to say this one. They'd make it so you were impaled just on the tips of your toes. And as you weakened and got more tired, you would essentially impale yourself as your legs began to give out. There was a video on WPD of a guy who jumped off a building to kill himself. He landed on a bollard which broke his fall enough to keep him conscious while dying of impalement. This one is rough. Very little gore but he's basically sitting on the ground and you can see the pole bulging out his neck skin. Horrible way to die. Poor guy wanted an easy way out. Basically he fell ass first onto it. The pole went up his bum. Or at least through his body as if it did. And almost out his neck. It was not a small pole though maybe 6 inch diameter. My aunt died in a car fire. She was driving drunk and went off the road and crashed her car. A fire started and the car was damaged to a point where she could not exit. Firefighters arrived and one tried to pull her out by her arm but only got skin. It's awful to think about. Similar thing happened to a friend of mine. Many many years ago when she was a toddler, she was in the car with her mother. They were in an accident and the car was wrecked. Her mum couldn't get out when a fire started. The mum climbed into the back seats and cloaked her body over that of my friends. By the time emergency services got there the mum was gone and my friend survived but she was badly injured with burns over the majority of her body. Mother died a hero. Respect. Severe radiation poisoning is pretty horrifying. It can take up to two weeks to kill you. During which time your body will fall apart at the molecular level while you're still alive. In some cases they can't even give you effective painkillers because your veins become so fragile they can't handle an injection. Oh, and just to duck with you, you'll start to feel better after a couple days. But that's just the calm before your skin starts to die. Since someone already said scaphism, my second worst one is strychnine poisoning. It can be inhaled, consumed, or absorbed through wet tissue, like the nose, mouth, or eyes. It causes your voluntary nervous system to go into overdrive, which makes every muscle in your body contract and spasm uncontrollably. These spasms can be strong enough to rip the muscles off your bones. If untreated, death usually comes within 2-3 hours either from asphyxiation, your chest muscles spasm so hard your ribs cannot expand, or from sheer exhaustion. There is no antidote to strychnine, although if caught immediately you can be put in sensory deprivation on massive doses of muscle relaxers. If you survive the first 24 hours, you usually live, if. Not too far from where I used to live, a family all died. What happened was that, on their farm, the fecal lagoon had released a bubble of methane gas. It killed one kid who had wandered nearby, from what I remember. 
the kid fell into the lagoon, and then each family member tried to get to the kid, and they also were knocked out and fell into the fecal lagoon, where they all drowned. Dude tries to blow his head off with a shotgun, the first shot just blows most of his jaw off, but he lives. He gets up, walks to the bathroom mirror, looks at himself, reloads and finishes the job. That moment of looking in the mirror must have been pure hell. Particularly horrible considering a majority of suicide attempts a person decides they want to live when it's too late. It's sad to think after the first shot did he change his mind but then saw his face and thought duck it as he's just made his situation worse. Yeah, a girl I went to high school with attempted suicide by jumping off the top of Castle Craig. She survived and said that she regretted jumping the instant she was airborne. I've heard that most jump suicide survivors say the same thing, if not all. Edit. For those asking, she sustained some injuries, but nothing too permanent as far as I'm aware. A good amount of hospital time was required, but after some recovery, she was okay. I didn't find out about her attempt until a few years after it happened, as I was never close with her. She was friends with my ex. Which is how I know what I know. There's forests directly underneath the cliff face upon which the castle sits. So I always just assumed the trees caught her and broke her fall. That guy that was injected with adrenaline and was skinned alive in a prison riot. Knew a guy in the navy who said he saw someone get cut in half by a snapped cable. He was still alive for about a minute after it happened apparently. That happened to a guy I went to high school with who went into the navy. Edit. I don't know why some people are making a joke out of this or doubting that it happened. I am not bullshitting around about this. And it isn't funny in the least. We lived in a small town and it happened a few years after we graduated. He was a young man. Only in his 20s. In Afghanistan there was a 12 year old girl. 14 years old Max. That poured gasoline over herself and set herself on fire because her parents were forcing her to marry a 60-ish year old man. Worst part about it is not being able to do anything to help her. I saw a video once of someone who had committed suicide by rat poison. Probably was on WPD. But I'll never forget that one. He's sort of hunched over. And there's just blood pouring out of his nose mouth. But he's very conscious head in his hands etc. Over time from blood loss, and I guess the effects of the poison, he starts to look really delirious and leans back where he's sitting, and there's just blood leaking out of him, everywhere, I think it thins your blood out, and he starts convulsing after a while, probably going into cardiac arrest, and it's just really long and really drawn out. At some point I think someone tries to see if he's okay and quickly nopes out. Has to be probably one of the worst ways to decide to die. Was probably very desperate, and not very informed about the effects of the poison. It was just very horrible to watch. I'm sure you can find it on Liverleak if you wanna see how rat poison kills. E. People. A friend of mine used to be a crime scene cleanup guy. He was once called in to clean up a car where an infant had been forgotten in a car during the summer in Kansas, where it was well over 100 degrees outside. Cause turn into ovens. He quit after that. I was a volunteer fireman for a bit, called to a motorcycle accident. It was actually a classmate of mine that had crested a hill at about 120 miles per hour and ran into a disc tiller, agriculture machine. It basically bisected his pelvis up to his ribcage and severed an arm. He was awake and talking but died on the Mercy Flight Chopper. The cleanup was terrible. It was summer and the heat baked his guts and blood into the pavement. There was a stain for 6 moss where he was laying. I felt worse for the 15 year old driving the tractor as he was sprayed with blood, guts, and literally shit. That kid was pretty shook up. My friend worked on the liver ward at the hospital. If you are suicidal and overdose on Panadol Tylenol it takes 3 days to die in extreme pain. She said they would have people in weekly who had taken a Panadol Tylenol overdose and by the time they got to the ward they had changed their mind. So this person who now wanted to live died an agonizing death filled with shame in front of their friends and relatives. TLDR. Don't overdose on Panadol Tylenol edit. So do not mention drugs that others have successfully OD'd on. There are some very successful OD drugs that are not well known and it is better to keep it that way. Fatal familial insomnia. You slowly lose the ability to sleep and begin to physically and mentally waste away. As someone who suffers from insomnia, it absolutely terrifies me. 
This story is extremely disturbing and sad. Back when I was in 7th grade, I had this friend, Lazar, who was a year older than me. He had 3 siblings two of which were much much younger. He also lived pretty close to where I lived. It's important to note that we live on the countryside. One day, while we're at school, the principal and the teachers are freaking out. Kids are starting to cry. I asked one of the kids what happened, and I just stood there horrified for a moment. Turns out that Laser's father was out on the field on a combine harvester working with his friend. When something got stuck in the rotary thresher, Laser's dad went back there to check it out. But after a while his friend thought that he was done and just decided to turn the harvester back on. However, his leg sleeve got caught up in the thresher and started to quickly pull him in. Basically crushing his leg and soon enough, his other leg as well. By the time his friend heard the screams and stopped the harvester, both of his legs were ripped off of his body and crushed completely. Only his upper half was left. His own son, Lazar, had to pick up what was left of his father and carry him to the car to get him to hospital immediately. His youngest child was there, watching all of this unfold, but I don't think he could comprehend it at the time. Having lived very far away from the nearest hospital, they had to basically meet the ambulance halfway there in order to not lose any precious time since his father, by some miracle, was still alive, though unconscious. All the way there, his own son had to hold him in his arms and wrap him in his clothing and using his belt trying desperately to stop the bleeding as much as he could. You can imagine how much this ducked him up. His father passed away, a few hours later if I remember correctly, and I was at school when this happened. Or there's always being skinned alive, aka flaying. Generally the victim starts with being left naked out in the hot sun for a day or two in order to get severe sunburn. If it's winter or just bad weather, a quick dunk in boiling water does the same thing. They're then strung up by the hands and a very sharp knife is used to make long straight incisions. The burn helps separate the skin from the underlying connective tissue. The skin is then peeled off from the muscle in large sheets using a hot knife. Between the burn and the hot knife, a skilled flayer could remove the skin with minimal blood loss, meaning the victim did not bleed out. Most common actual cause of death would then be hypothermia, as the skin is a vitally important part of your body's ability to regulate its temperature. Or if they were super unlucky they'd die of sepsis, blood poisoning due to infection, as much as days later. And of course the victim would be kept conscious during the entire procedure. Knew an old guy who lived alone. He had been walking around confused one day asking for someone to help him get an inhaler. They got him figured out and took him back home. The next thing we knew, he had died in the shower with the hot water still running days later. It was assumed that he was having difficulty breathing and the hot moist air did not help him any. And he passed out and hit his head. He was found, with some parts of him floating in this sludgy mix which had accumulated over the days he was left under the water. Not the most horrible way I know or have seen but still one that I hate to think about. At my local water park a kid who was 10 same age as me at the time. Drowned. Now the way he drowned is when he went down the water slide and at the end when you slide into a pool there was the pipeline that sucks water back up to the top. Now this pipeline had a grate on it but it sucked with great force. It used to pull kids towards it as you tried to swim out and it was kinda a fun game to not swim it. Until one day a kid went under and got held onto the grate of the pipe and could not swim away. He drowned and was only found 20 minutes later when his mom went looking for him. This pipe was probably about 6 meters away from where you slide into the pool. Just the thought of being so small and helpless as you get held under and drown and just watching other kids land in the pool and swim to safety. All having fun. I don't know it just gets to me not even being able to call for help when it is so close. My cousin's baby starved to death before a year old. She never got comforted never got any good baby food she just got born into the world to heroin addicted parents in a county with poor services and then she died. Explosive decompression. Biford Dolphin November 5, 1983. The Biford was a deep sea driller. There was 4 divers and 2 dive tenders in the diving chamber. The usual decompression and opening procedures were not followed and all the divers and one of the tenders were killed. 3 of the divers bodies were reasonably intact the 4th was well dismembered and multi-lead. Skin of the torso and arms. Part of the spinal cord. And one leg was the entirety of the body that was intact. No ducking thank you. 
Thank you kind strangers for making Thea my top rated answers. It replaced how I became my town's Dr. Ruth. Thank you. Ro, you made it to the end. You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price.